I'm really interested in the first contact between Europeans and indigenous people. Um, that moment of first contact strikes me as a moment of, well, it's almost, a, it is a mythological kind of moment. Uh, people who've never seen each other before or encounter each other, uh, sometimes it's a bit of a surprise, sometimes it's anticipated, but they don't have a common language. Uh, they're strange to each other, they're afraid of each other, they're excited about the encounter. So um, I, I study these moments of encounter between Native people and, and Europeans to try and find out, well, uh, lots of things. Um, but I guess the theme that I'm most interested in is communication. How do they communicate with each other? What kind of miscommunications happened? And I guess I have this belief that in those early years of contact, uh, there were a lot of miscommunication, and some of those miscommunications sort of become sedimented into our relationship between each other, and uh, I think in some ways still affect our relationship today. So when Europeans uh, first encountered indigenous people, they brought with them some stereotypes already because they had encountered indigenous people, you know, around the globe that they brought with them. Um, but every group was different, so it was every group, uh, you know, had some surprises. Um, but they saw indigenous people through a lens of the Enlightenment. This is the late 18th century, so uh, Captain Cook arrives here in 1786, uh, 1776, um, and the Spanish are here a few years before. Um, so they have this kind of Enlightenment uh, notion that um, uh, it's a Christian notion. God has created the world, he's created all kinds of marvels, uh, and he's created indigenous people, but it's a uh, little there's a couple of theories going on about whether indigenous people were created in the same creation as Adam and Eve or some kind of separate and inferior creation. But in any case, these European explorers were, um, had this ethos that these were souls that could potentially be Christianized and they had to be, they should be treated, uh, if not respectfully, at least uh, paternalistically. Indigenous people uh, hadn't encountered Europeans before, and they lived in a world of spirit, and where where they didn't see a huge difference between the spiritual world and the physical world. They they understood uh, those two things uh, much more as integrated than, than we do now. And so, when these uh, strange ships with strange colored men wearing strange clothes arrived, they first interpreted them through the spirit world and thought these might be uh, dead ancestors returning or they might be uh, just incarnations of some of their spiritual um, uh, creatures that they were familiar with in their world. And, um, and so those interesting moments of kind of terror and excitement and enthusiasm, and, you know, I can see them happening in different encounters up and down the coast, um, uh, are really quite interesting because it, it allows us to see how profoundly different these two worlds were. And, and the potential for violence and, and, and collision was certainly there, but in general, the, um, uh, that didn't happen. In general, these were peaceful encounters of people trying to feel each other out, trying to understand each other, trying to communicate across with no common language. Um, and then uh, they often use the, um, the, the, the language of trade as a way of kind of uh, establishing relationships. So I've written a book uh, on this sort of period which I call Makuk, uh, A New History of Aboriginal White Relations. And Makuk is a word uh, from, the, from the west coast of Vancouver Island, from the Nichalmas people, which means, well, it means lots of things actually, but it meant, meant to mean let's trade. And that was the first word that Captain Cook heard or recorded in his diary, Makuk. And uh, it it becomes sedimented into this relationship uh, because uh, Native people and Europeans developed a kind of a common pidgin language, a kind of a, um, a trade language, well, a really simplistic language. We call it now, we call it Chinook jargon, but it incorporated these words they first learned at Friendly Cove, including Makuk, which in their language means to trade, to buy, to sell, to exchange, any, any kind of interaction is Makuk. Um, so uh, that seemed to me the kind of a theme, and that's why I called my book McCook. Um, so Europeans and indigenous people are trading over the side of the ship. Uh, they're trying to figure each other out. It doesn't take indigenous people too long to figure out that these Europeans aren't exactly spiritual creatures. But in their world, everybody has some kind of spirit power. And these Europeans must have had some kind of heavy-duty spirit power that allowed them to bring all this iron and, and uh, copper and 
uh, and guns, and uh, by the 18th century, the Europeans had quite sophisticated, uh, you know, metallurgy. So, um, indigenous people, uh, I think, and this is something we don't understand about uh, those early years uh, sufficiently, they knew Europeans weren't gods. They knew Europeans weren't, uh, after a short encounter at least, weren't, you know, uh, spirits themselves, but they knew Europeans, like everybody, had spirit power and they wanted to get some of that spirit power. They wanted to know where it came from. Uh, they wanted to benefit from it. And so, uh, hence, when missionaries arrived and said, hey, we're going to teach you about our spirit power, um, indigenous people were open to that. They wanted to, hey, they're, these guys, uh, in the indigenous world, the spirit power was tightly guarded and, uh, and you didn't talk about it. Um, you might perform it in a, in a dance at special occasions or whatever, but you, you just, it was sort of, you would, you would uh, in a way, uh, jinx it if you spoke about it out loud. So these Europeans were willing to share that spirit power, teach their power songs, their, their, their Christian songs. And um, so, uh, but, uh, you know, for, for a century after contact, I believe, and this uh, puts me kind of a bit of on a limb in my, among my colleagues, indigenous people still try to figure out what that spirit power Europeans had. Um, and, uh, and so that the whole period of communication and then the misunderstandings that were built in, partly that spirit power uh, misunderstanding, but partly I think uh, this profound misunderstanding on the part of Europeans about this idea of superiority and race, those things get built, you know, almost hardwired into our relationship and it's taken us, you know, two centuries to start to kind of crack away at that sediment and open that up.